Good day, this is Brad Kayla, PhD. And my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. Folks, those are fantastic times, the days in the past. But what is happening today? We are just a few days before the second impeachment trial of a president of the United States. We're facing a pandemic worldwide. And right now, panic city for many, many, many people. And I'm so sorry for you to be in that position. I know we're all facing it. I was just talking to somebody somewhere in uh, Czechoslovakia. And she is feeling sick. And I, the first question is, is it COVID? No, I'm, I'm not sure. But they sound so sad. Our concern is with, with our co-workers, with our family, the people that we don't see too often because we are supposed to stay home. And if you do that, you will gain something. You will gain weight because you're inactive. You're not doing the way you normally act. And therefore, I make this video to help you, to encourage you, not to scare you. But folks, it is time that we wake up all those things we have brought onto ourselves. Let's see what we can do today. And maybe this will be help. This will be inspiration for you because we do care. We do love you and we want you to succeed, to be successful in life. That is what it's all about. Let's check out. When I was talking about the Ember Alert, I had a little statement and I know I did not talk too much about it. Are you familiar with the dog and the swine story? One of the critical figurative symbols is disregarded by students of the Gospels. Now, many people say, well, I don't know if I really want to study the Bible, but the Gospel is actually one of the oldest books, if not the oldest book. It's a book about life. It's a book about disasters. It's a book about frustration, but also a book of how to overcome. And when we talk about situations like today, we are all facing a pandemic. There are ways of harnessing what is inside of you. See, when we got created, we got created because we have a body, we have a soul, and we have a spirit. And when I talk about body, soul, and spirit, I might have to say, a body, we all know that is this stuff here. You know, you can pinch the, your skin, you can pinch your cheeks, you can pull your ears or whatever you want to pull. But the point is, we also have a mental way of communicating. We can talk together. We can reason together. We can argue together, but with respect. And then there is that aspect of spiritual. Now, a lot of people will say, oh, why are you talking about spiritual stuff? Well, folks, I don't know if you are aware of it, but when you were born, you were created a certain way. We discovered that you are not just a fetus sitting in a womb of the mother. Because if I could talk with you then and would tell you, oh, my little baby boy, my little baby girl, you know what's going to happen with you when you are eight or nine months old? What do you mean nine months? What is a month? Well, it doesn't matter. But when you get to the point that you're nine months old, your tummy, the, well, the fetus that you are in, you know, the womb, that will kick you out. Why? Well, you start growing and you will get bigger. What is bigger? And when you are big enough, you push yourself out of the womb. And when you come out of the womb, you start crying. What is crying? I don't worry about it. You will know. And then when you cry, you get a slap on the bum. Because if you don't cry, there's something wrong with you. What is wrong? No, I'm just trying to explain to you. And that is how I feel when I talk with people about the greatest expectation of life is to be part of the family of God and to be restored again, restorative justice. When I put out an Amber Alert, I wanted your attention. I wanted you to understand that this has been an ongoing attack on the family of God. God loves his children so much that he restorative justice. He put restorative justice in place. And there was one person 
who finally got it done. You see, when we were born, when we were created in paradise, Adam and Eve had a great time with God because they were in his presence. They were naked. They were themselves. There was no shame because it was beautiful. And Adam was in love with his wife Eve and Eve vice versa. But what the two of them did not realize that it is husband and wife. That is how they were created. That formed the image of God. It was not just a man by himself. It was not just a woman by herself. It was husband and wife. And that is what God is all about. God is a complete package. When God says you are created according my image, you were created according his image, husband and wife. And if you say, but I'm single, then wonderful. If you want to stay single, that is good. But you are missing something in your life. And God will open, will reveal that to you in a different way. But in my case, it was husband and wife. And when I start to recognize the power of uh, God was just not a man, that God was not just a woman, he was husband and wife. And then there was another aspect. It's a spiritual aspect. And why is that? Because we human beings, we have learned to measure things. When we move in a house, we are looking at the width, the height, and the what else? There are three parts. How wide is it? How high is it? And the third part, that will give us the cubic content. Now we are thinking in three dimensions. Ah, that's how that works. But when you create, you speak in a 12th dimension level. In other words, when God speaks, God speaks in a powerful way. It is so powerful that we have a hard time understanding. And that's the beauty of God Almighty. He is an awesome God that speaks in creation at the 12th dimension level. Now, 12th dimension level. That means that at the moment I'm reading some material that was written in Aramaic. I do not speak Aramaic. It is a language that was spoken at the time that Yeshua HaMashiach was around. He spoke the language of God. And when he taught his disciples to speak the same way as the rabbi, as the teacher, the one who inspired them, he mentioned a few things. And why did I end up with the Aramaic books? I tell you, there was something lacking in my life. There was something I did not feel comfortable with. I discovered during a 20 year court appearances, or 18 years to be precise, I had six, eight years with lawyers. In other words, I could afford to have lawyers. But when I reached a level of $10 million, I was broke. I had nothing left over. And so for 12 more years they went. And so I decided to pick up the books and learn the law and defend ourselves as self-defense. And that was in Canada. You're supposed to be covered under the Canadian Charter Rights of Freedom. But there was a violation there, but we went on. And we learned the hard way that the law is an awesome place. Myths and if you only do it right. See, the law, God is law. God is such a perfected situation that the moment Adam and Eve failed to listen to God and they sided with Satan, God had to protect them. And immediately he puts them out of his presence because otherwise they would have been living forever in an imperfect world. And we know what imperfect is. We see it on a day-to-day -day basis. But God in his love wanted to protect his family. It's like you, when you have a kid or when you have a little baby in your arms, you want to protect it. Your children are holy. Your children, at least I hope, that they are something that means something for you. And when we have an amber alert out, that means something is amiss. And that is what is happening with society, folks. When we have a president that is attacking his own capital, there's something wrong. A man that is so deranged, that is only thinking about himself, and then the body of Christ following him. There is something wrong. 
And that is why this is so important. We need to understand the love of God, not the love and the lusts for money. Because as we become aware what God wants, and when I say what God wants, you say, well, don't we know that? No, apparently not. Why am I saying this, folks? Because we have erred so much and so often that it gets annoying. And then we have to go back to the basics. One thing I learned in court was when you have proof, you stick to your proof. When you have precedence, that is, if you have another case backing you up, then you hold on to that. Stick to your one point. And so I am going back to basics. When we believe, we want to know why we believe. We need to know why things are not working the way we were told it was supposed to be. And when we are honest to ourselves, we all know that something is wrong. And what is wrong? We have a problem because we're dealing with three issues. Politics, money, and spirituality. When we talk to people that are unhappy, they will say, oh, the politicians. And then they will blame. And some people can give you scary story about how mean the politicians are. And then the people that are money. Oh, folks, I tell you, when I worked in Wall Street, I learned about money. Yes, I had an opportunity to live on the street, but also work on Wall Street with a private bank. And I learned so much. But money is also a manipulative situation. People will be and can be and often are manipulated. I don't want to go into who or what. You have your own imagination. But then there's a third aspect, spirituality, religion. Why is PMS such a pain in the butt? Most women, they know what it is. I've been married almost 45 years. I know what it is. And there is a painful experience. But for those that understand that God created this with a P, he wanted us physical around. He gave us a mental capacity that we could communicate with people. And then he also gave us a spirit so that the spirit of God, that would complete the whole. And that was exactly what God had to cut us up for. Because if we lost that spirit, we were lost forever. And God restored that by making a covenant agreement. First, he did it with Abraham. He promised him. Then he had Moses. And he gave Moses a covenant agreement. And when Moses went down on the mountain and he saw how the people were behaving, he was ashamed. And the beauty of it is God is love. Although the stones were down and out and kaput, they were broken. God said, don't worry. I will give you the Ten Commandments for the children of darkness. See, the covenant was for the children of light. A covenant is different than a commandment. A commandment is if you do not this, then you do. And what happened was, when we got the Ten Commandments for the children of darkness, we were automatically in darkness because it was Satan that now controlled us. The moment we filled the Ten Commandments of darkness, we had a problem. Because now we are indebted to Satan. And that is what is causing all this commotion. When we have the prodigal son, and that is the beauty of, the, of his holiness, the prodigal son and the father. Remember that story? Do you remember the story of the prodigal son and daughter? They went out on their own. They blew everything. The money that they got as an inheritance. It is a parable to make it easy. But what most people don't realize is that parable tells us all about today. See, we as a society, we as a body of believers, we as Christians or Muslim people or people from any kind of faith, we all have the same predicament. We fail to understand the love of God. And why can I say that? For 60 years, six decades, I've been wrestling with this, challenging. There were times that I didn't even want to hear it anymore. I was in the ministry. I went to Bible school. 
seminary. I preached for 12 years, all over. And every time you see the same, what is it? Why are we not getting it right? Because our foundation is not correct. Folks, in 325 AD, there was a emperor of Rome. And during one of his sessions in Nicaea, he dictated that this is what you're going to do. And otherwise, I will kill you. And why am I hammering on this? Because if your foundation is not right, if you do not understand your foundation, your home will go down. Our society is based on principles that are not right. If we are just, if we look and search for justice, for peace, then we do have to recognize that we have to be in balance. And if we are not in balance, folks, you will have a hard time. What is balance? Let's check that out. The balance that God is talking about is all brought together in three words, three folks. Just in case, three, P, M, S. You say, what in the world is that? You just mention it. I am saying physical, spiritual, mental and spiritual. But what did he give? He gave us the way, he gave us the truth, and he gave us the light. And why are you not following that? The reason why I can talk about it, I'm describing my own situation. And maybe you can see yourself in that situation. See, I was always an upstanding guy. I believed in the proper things. I believed that you had to reach out. I did that. And yet, somewhere, somehow, whatever we did, I always fell short. I didn't know why. Then, when I was in the gospel, I took a time off. Because there was something not right in the organization I worked in, a missionary office. When I named the names, you say, oh, I recognize that. The biggest, greatest pastors from all over the world, they came there preaching miracles. Power, unbelievable, Jesus movement, whatever you want to. But the reality was, something was amiss. When I started traveling around the world from 1971 to 73, I saw the same all over the world, wherever I went. I had the chance to preach in many prisons or in places where hardly anyone comes. And I felt great, yet there was something lacking. And when I started to understand all this, I was in jail. Instead of being a preacher, I was the one that was sentenced. Six years times three. It sounds like forever. And before that were 18 years in court. Somewhere, somehow, something didn't add up. And that is what I'm sharing with you folks. I'm sharing out of experience. I'm not telling you something, I'm sharing with you. See, all the things I was brought up with, we applied that. Somewhere, somehow, something went wrong. And you know what went wrong? When a friend of mine discovered that my business was growing, we were doing millions of dollars, and all of a sudden we were worth a couple of billion dollars, 
due to the collateral I had been able to amass. And my friend was a multimillionaire. He lived in a 15,000 square foot home in Canada, London, Ontario. And yes, folks, we were friends for over 10 years. We went together on the bike, we drove all over the place, we motivated, spoke publicly, and blah, 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 blah. Did business together. But my friend was totally immersed in money. He needed more money to secure whatever. And so when he saw how my business was growing, he wanted his share. But his share was no share. He had put an offer. I said, Bob, this is what I want you to do. But I didn't feel comfortable and I said, no, thank you. And he said, don't you dare leave this house because if you get through that door, you will never ever come back and you will see how much power I have. And that power came because he was a Freemason and on top of it, he was the head of the Freemasons. Too bad for me, I did not study that subject. I knew a little bit about it, but now I know. And what I did, what I discovered was, if a man that is a multi multimillionaire will break you at all costs because he wants more money, there's something evil going on. And if you are dealing with Freemasons, there are some good people among the Freemasons, but the real majority of the Freemasons, they run the politics, they run the money, and they run spirituality. Yes, folks. If the people in the Vatican are P2s and P3s and black popes and what have you, there is something not right. And so what do you do? You go back to basics. You find out where did it all start? Did it start with Jesus in a little manger on and we sing Christmas songs? No, Jesua was born. He was born out of a man, a woman in this case. He was created. When he came on this earth, he was a little babe. He grew up a man and he started teaching. And as a rabbi, many saw him as a rabbi. He had special powers because he had honesty, integrity. He had peace and he shared that peace. And yes, they tried to kill him and they killed him. They nailed him on the cross. Some people might say, well, the cross are crossbars and what have you, but they killed him. And as he rose again after three days, somewhere, somehow, that was written down in books, historical books. Josephus, some of you have heard of him. He was a Jewish person that lived around that time and studied the history and wrote it down. Pilus and there are others, Aplinus, and there are so many more people that wrote in Aramaic because that was the language of Yeshua HaMashiach, also known as Jesus. And as those books were written, they were stored somewhere in the Vatican. And we call it coronavirus. It is the Vatican Bank, 52 miles of documents, books, manuscripts, and those were written in Aramaic. The books that I'm referring to, and I got a hold of them, and I started studying, and I started looking for what was it that Jesus really taught. And it turns out that what Jesua taught and what we as church today believe are two different things. Why is that? Are our leaders confused? Are they lying? Or are they hiding something? I'm not sure what the answer is, because some of the people I admired have come down in my eyes, in my vision. Why? If they start prophesying that Mr. Trump is the mom, and they keep on going, telling people how to vote for him, and he is not the one, because he is a scumbag. Then you come to a point that why are the leadership in the body of Christ sharing stuff that is not true? And so I went down and back in the books, understanding what was happening in 325. The Jewish people, the followers of the way, the truth and the light 
were no longer around because many of them were killed. Many of them had fled. They were all over the world, spread all over. And then we have now a leadership of Goyim, people that are not Jewish. They don't understand the true relationship between God and mankind because that is what the Jewish people had. They had a very good understanding because they had the law. Their interpretation was a little bit different, but they had the law. They had the way to live. But when the emperor of Rome, Constantine I, said, this is what you do, they now had a choice. Either get killed or become a Roman Catholic. And that is what happened in 325. The books got rewritten. It was the emperor of Rome that determined that paganism should mix with Christianity. But the question is, was Jesus a Christian? Because Christianity was already around in 325 BC before Christ. At the time that Alexander the Great was around, he started praying to Serapis, the god of the underworld. And why are you today as a Christian praying to the sun god, to the gods of Serapis and others that are stone? Are we pleasing God, folks? Or are we totally deceived? Have we been hoodwinked? And I don't say this because I'm happy to share this with you. Those were what the things that I had to discover. Mind you, I was in jail. Maximum security, books all over. But to get the books, that was a little harder. And as I started to read and interact and, and, and let that resonate with me, I started to recognize why you can have the right intent, as the told me, and still be wrong. And as a leader, you are held liable. You are held liable. You are held liable, folks. This is the same as God Almighty. He said, I sent you an invitation. I invite you. Prodigal sons, come. Right now, there is an ember alert out for you. Please respond. You have to allow God in your life. And God wants you to be on the way, the truth and the light. Not on Broadway, where two and a half or million people are Christians and praise the Lord, killing each other. For what? For a little bit more money like Mr. Trump? Folks, we need to put our house in order. And if we have a problem with that, sure you can blame me. Sure you can blame Trump. Sure you can blame the politicians on the money management. But it has nothing to do with it. It's me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. And if we cannot live up to our responsibility, don't blame anybody, but take a look at yourself. Ask God for directions. Because if you come to the same conclusion as I, that I was a prodigal son and said, Father, forgive me. That is a simple thing. You see, you can be a very good sinner. You know what good sinners do? They repent. If you're a stupid sinner, then you don't. You reject everything from God. But if you accept the Father, because you are created according His image, you are Him. You are His child. The only thing lacking is spiritual experience, and God will teach you personally. But you need to be in His presence, and His presence is on the way, the truth, and the light. And it's not always easy, folks. But you know what happened? God is an awesome God. And he will help you. He will set you free. He will give you wisdom. Because his angels are serving him as well as us. But we need to learn how to do that. How to interact. And that is why it is so important. That you make up your mind. Don't blame Mr. Trump. Don't blame whatever circumstance you're facing. Take it as an opportunity and say, Father, I don't understand this. But I need wisdom. Guide me. Direct me. And that is where the word comes. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And all those other things shall be added unto you. And you know why? Because God loves you. And his love is so much greater. Remember that I talked about the 
pigs and the swines, the pigs, sorry, the dogs and the pigs, or swines for that matter, a dog will barf, he will just vomit all over. A pig will just trample your pearls. But if you get the word of God, his word, then you will understand the love of God. And sometimes, like in my case, when I was flat on my face, it finally started to dawn. Yes, folks, it's taken me six decades and one decade to write it down in a book and to formulate it for myself and to understand that I keep on studying and seeking. But the beauty of it is God will forgive you if you repent. But for most people, that is almost impossible because they will never admit that they are wrong. We see that in the White House, former President Trump. What about you? Are you as stubborn as he is? Or are you saying, Father, forgive me? I don't know what to do. And he will open the door. Start checking out why you believe what you believe. Because that is what will open your eyes, folks. And if it is slow, so will we do. God didn't say you have to do this fast. He said, do it. Repent. And he is waiting. And let's cancel that Amber Alert because you are home. Folks, I invite you, take this opportunity, for God is a good God, and you are created according His image, and therefore there is more for you. Please, now remember, tough times never last, but tough people, they do. God bless you.
Thank you.